So our objectives going into it, we were trying to figure out what the cells in the spinal fluid of people with MS are specific for. So that's that's been one of the challenges in MS is that we don't have a defined, well, we assume that it's an autoimmune disease and there's a lot of evidence for that. Um, there's also a lot of evidence linking the multiple sclerosis to Epstein-Barr virus, uh, particularly some, some really interesting stuff that's come out in the last year. Um, and our interest in this study, what we were trying to do was figure out what these cells in the spinal fluid of people with MS are specific for. Um, so the, we haven't been able to identify a target uh, in the brain for the autoimmune attack in MS, which is different than a lot of other autoimmune diseases where we know what the, what the target uh, protein or, or other antigen is. Um, so we were, wanted to look at the cells in the spinal fluid, which is about as close as you can easily get to the cells in the brain in people with MS. Um, and we routinely, people sometimes get lumbar punctures and with spinal fluid collected for diagnosis. So we uh, used samples from those people. Um, and what we ended up finding, so we, we started out looking um, at very different antigens, uh, but what we ended up finding was that most of the, or not most, many of the cells in the spinal fluid are specific for Epstein-Barr virus infected cells. Um, and that, that's actually one of the, I think, interesting points of this. We stimulated that we're getting a lumbar puncture for diagnosis. They had had their first episode of symptoms. They had not been on any treatment yet. Uh, and they were getting the spinal fluid to look for the oligoclonal bands that are helpful in MS diagnosis. Uh, with the spinal fluid, we took out the cells that were there and we sequence the T cell receptors uh, of the spinal fluid T cells. Uh, and the T cell, so each T cell will have a distinct receptor, which gives it the specificity for one particular thing in the whole universe of things that are out there. And you can use the T cell receptor sequence, particularly a short part of it that's called the CDR3 sequence. You can use that as a kind of a marker for specific T cell clones. Um, and hopefully at some point we'll be able to connect those CDR3 sequences to the target of the immune attack. Anyway, so we got the spinal fluid, we sequenced the T cell receptors that are in the spinal fluid. So we have this big long list of T cell receptor sequences. At the same time, we got blood and we stimulated it with a bunch of different things. Uh, we stimulated with Epstein-Barr virus, so the actual virus itself, because that's been linked to multiple sclerosis. We also generated, for each person, we generated Epstein-Barr virus infected cells, which are abbreviated LCLs for lymphoblastoid cell lines, and we stimulated with those. And then we stimulated also with varicella virus, that's the chickenpox virus, it, some people have argued is important for MS. And with influenza, which was kind of an irrelevant kind of control stimulus, and also with Canada. Um, so we had, had several different antigens. So we took those, the blood cells, we stimulated them with these different things. We use flow cytometry to sort out the responding T cells for each of those antigens. And then we sequence the T cell receptors from those and use those sequences to assign the specificity to the cells that are in the spinal fluid. Uh, and what we came up with was that the um, cells in the spinal fluid were much more likely to be specific for LCLs, that's the Epstein-Barr infected cells, than for anything else. Uh, and we looked at that several different ways. One of them was a, a Jacquard score, which is a mathematical way to assess how much two different groups of things overlap. And then the other is we looked at 
the fraction of the shared sequences in the spinal fluid, and we broke that down by abundance. So what you find, when you do these T cell receptor sequencings, the distribution of the sequences is very skewed. The, um, so for most of the sequences, about 60% of them, they're only present in a single copy or a single read. Uh, another 20% are there in two reads, and then the rest of them uh, go up in abundance. And we were particularly interested in the most abundant 1% of the um, T cell receptors in the spinal fluid, because we figure that those are the ones, they've either been specifically recruited from the blood and kept in the spinal fluid, or they've been recruited into the spinal fluid and have divided and proliferated there. Um, so we assume that those are going to be the ones that are relevant to disease and, and actually causing the problems in MS. And when we broke it down by the abundance, the so, so overall, about if you looked at all these um, sequences in the spinal fluid, about 13% of them were specific for the LCLs. If you look only at the 1% most abundant, about 47% were specific for LCLs. Um, so the abundant, six, abundant TCR sequences are much more likely to be specific for LCLs. Um, and that's kind of our, our basic finding. Uh, I have to point out that other people have demonstrated that there are T cells specific for LCLs in the spinal fluid of MS patients. Uh, and that's been done several different times with different methods over the years. Um, I think our, our, the novel things in our work are we broke it down by abundance, uh, which uh, most people were not able to do because they were using different methods. And also we compared to a bunch of different other things. So you have an idea how many T cells specific for any random infection like flu or Canada should be present in the spinal fluid. And it's much, much lower than the, the number that are present for LCLs. So I think the, the what this work shows us is that there are a lot of T cells specific for LCLs present in the spinal fluid. It doesn't tell us what those cells are doing. Um, and also it only tells us about the T cells. We did not investigate the B lymphocytes. That's the other, other main kind of lymphocytes. Uh, we didn't investigate those at all in this work. Uh, so the things that we're planning to do, or actually are trying to do now uh, as the next steps, one is to do single cell sequencing on the spinal fluid so that we have both the T cell receptor and all the other RNAs that that uh, cell is expressing. So we can get an idea of what the cell is doing, whether it's, whether it's a cell that's actively killing other cells, um, whether it's attacking and other things, and if so, what mechanisms is it using? Um, or is it a cell that's regulatory or a cell that's exhausted and is not doing anything at all? Um, so that's one of the next steps. The other is to look at the B lymphocytes that are present in the spinal fluid. And a lot more, a lot of work has been done with what the B cells in the spinal fluid are doing. But I think this, this method could um, give us some insight into whether the B cells are similarly specific for uh, Epstein-Barr infected cells.